coming from a situation that I came from, which is similar to a lot of people in this country growing up in an underserved environment, going to the worst public school in D.C., uh, and being able to make it out of all that, you know, it's that is a gift that I can give to somebody else. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Journey Time, where we learn all about people's journeys. And joining us today is another special guest, Jeremiah Atawachu. Welcome to Journey Time. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. I go back with Jerry to college days. We went to school together. He's now in the NFL doing awesome things in the community um, through his foundation, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But I first love to hear about, you know, Jeremiah as a child. You moved here from Nigeria to the States. Talk about that transition and what it was like for you as a child transitioning into the culture here. So I moved to the United States in 2001 when I was eight years old. Um, I was reuniting with my dad. He lived in um, Washington, D.C. at the time. And, you know, we moved right into the inner city. Uh, definitely wasn't the best experience. You know, I experienced a lot of different things, you know, that happen when you try to assimilate from bullying uh, to just adjust into cultural norms and things like that. So, um, you know, that was a very pivotal part of my childhood. Because earlier we were talking too about your, your childhood and getting bullied and some of the things that you deal, dealt with at school. Um, how did you overcome that? You know, in today's society, a lot of children are getting bullied. You know, what message maybe do you have to children out there that may be walking in your shoes today? One, I would definitely say protect yourself. You know, I, you know, after the first few times experiencing it, you know, my parents encouraged me to protect myself however I saw, you know, what's best for me. Uh, two, I would say, you know, from, uh, you know, protect yourself within and not allow, you know, whatever somebody's trying to change about, about you because that's what essentially what bullying is, is people trying to change who you are, uh, knowing who you are and just holding on to your identity and not letting that gift that they're trying to take away from you, not losing it. Yeah. And I know one of your gifts, obviously, is, you know, using your athletic ability to do to do work. And I mean, you're out here, you know, you're a veteran now in the NFL doing really great things. Talk about that experience, though, when you were in high school, you originally didn't walk in, or was it middle school? It was high in, in high school. High so school. when I got to high school, I, I was trying to sign up to play soccer, mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up walking into a room. Everybody was lining up, and I just got in the line, and I got to the front of the line. The freshman football coach was like, you're going to play football. So, you know, I got into it. I wasn't very good at the time. You know, I was very new to the sport, but, you know, as the years went by, I got better, and God put people in my way to help me, you know, uh, see my potential to play in, in college. And I was able to get a college scholarship and go to school for free. And I'm, I'm very thankful for that. And that's amazing. Literally, you never know. Walk into a wrong practice literally could lead to years of success in what you're doing. And, um, you know, not just through sports, but you are now able to use your platform to give back. Um, and it, particularly as it goes with raising awareness and just support in the sickle cell anemia battle. Can you talk about the Glory's Hope Foundation, um, obviously in honor of your sister, but what led you to starting that and the progress that you, you all have made? I'll say Glory's Hope Foundation was uh, something that came to my table. My mom brought it to me my second year in, in 2015 in, in San Diego. And, you know, she told me that, you know, this is something that I should take up on. You know, my sister has sickle cell disease and she's been fighting this battle her whole life. and. You know, she spends a lot of times in the hospital and gets blood transfusions and she's on all different types of, you know, pain medication. And literally, you know, the pain that sickle cell disease, people with sickle cell disease face is literally like razor blades in your bloodstream and just understanding that type of pain and that she goes through. And, you know, there's people amongst us that live with torture. You know, we know them, our family, our friends, uh, but, you know, they're strong people, so they don't really show it that much and what I realized about sickle cell disease you know when I first started the foundation it wasn't getting the attention that a lot of other diseases were getting because it's a disease that affects mostly people of African descent or Asian and Indian descent so it was definitely something that you know I felt that I had to take up and uh, understanding that if two parents have the trait the sickle cell trait then they can have a child with the full-blown sickle cell disease and parents have four kids and so they had a one in uh, four chance of their kids having the disease and uh, 
you know, fortunately and you know, and fortunately because my sister was the strongest one. She was the first one. She had it, and I was spared. So I felt like it was my, you know, you know, my duty to you know promote this foundation. And we've given out scholarships to students at Howard University for with sickle cell disease to help them with uh, books and things they need for school. And also, we do a program abroad in Nigeria, just educating and providing simple pain medication for people with sickle cell disease. So, uh, you know, with, in my time with in San Diego with the Chargers, we, uh, you know, I, I did a lot of stuff in the community, but, you know, I was recognized primarily for the blood drive I did in Washington, D.C. I did a bunch of other events, but, you know, the team saw a fit to make me the Walter Payton Man of the Year, you know, because of my foundation, and they donated, you know, a sizable amount of money to my foundation to get it, to get it kicked off the right way the NFL did. So it was, it was great that, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that my mom pushed me to start the foundation and you know I grew up most of my life not really knowing my sister had the disease because she, she was such a vibrant person I would only see her like every you know every other month you know laying in bed in pain and crying so you know it's it's definitely a fulfilling thing for me to be able to do that that is awesome that you're using your platform to give back to really you know find your gift and use your family's story to help help this cause and you are also, you mentioned it, but Nigerian-American. Can you talk about, I don't know, maybe that identity and, and how, you know, your, your heritage, your background has shaped you into the man that you are today? I would definitely say my, my background has shaped me into the man I am today because of my faith. I think the one thing, my, the one gift that I can always thank my parents for was the gift of, you know, God and prayer and being able to go to a, to a higher being prayer and just ask for, for help because, you know, I don't want to carry the weight of the world on my shoulders. I'd rather put it on the person that created the world. So that's essentially, you know, been a big part of my heritage. Uh, my parents were very hardworking individuals, very highly educated, so they stressed the importance of school, the importance of hard work, but they also didn't, you know, put us in a box. They didn't tell us to become a doctor or a lawyer. They also allowed us to be creative. And that's one thing I valued about my, both my parents a lot because, you know, the stereotype for Nigerian parents is that, you know, they push their kids to, to uh, doctor, lawyer, doctor, lawyer, engineer. engineer. So my parents were never, never like that. They were very hands off, you know, they told us, you know, here, it's your, it's your life. You do what you want with it. We have our degrees, you know, we don't really care. So I think it, it allowed me to be able to play sports, you know, so, and I'm thankful to my parents for that. All they did was, you know, establish a foundation for us that we can always go back to. That foundation is so, so, so important. Can you talk about some of the things that keeps you going? I know, you know, you're up before the sun rises some days, you're doing these intense workouts, you're here in these meetings, you're on the field, you know, you're in so many different places or in the community or with family. Where do you find your, you know, your strength along your journey and then what, what keeps you going? I think for me, the strength along the journey just comes in, uh, definitely one comes from my family, two, it comes from my faith, and then three, it just comes in, in satisfaction and knowing that what I'm doing is not for a, completely for a monetary gain. I'm not doing it just to make money, I'm doing it because I'm, I'm allowing myself to be in a position to be able to influence other people for the better. And I think at the end of the day, it's all about influence and because, uh, you know, money and all those things, those things are vain and those things come and go and you know the attention and the praise of people comes and goes. But I think when you're able to positively impact somebody's life and you know coming from a situation that I came from, which is similar to a lot of people in this country growing up in an underserved environment, going to the worst public school in DC, uh, and being able to make it out of all that, you know, it's that is a gift that I can give to somebody else and essentially help somebody else be able to get out of that and understand that they can make it to, you know, you can come here to this country and be an immigrant and live in the attic of a church, you know, and be, you know, somewhat of a charity case to turn in that situation around and, you know, being given to charity, you know, so it, I think it's a remarkable story. Yeah, it's a definitely an amazing story. I'm getting goosebumps. Yeah. so amazing. Yeah. Did you think that you would end up here after all these years or like, you know, what did you think? all of this that you, you are, you've accomplished and that you're able to do? Well, I, I honestly haven't accomplished anything yet. I think this is only the start, you know, of what, you know, what God is trying to do with my, with my life. And 
if I just let him take control, you know, everything else, I can do a lot more. I can impact a lot more people. But I think I've been able to inspire a lot of people from where I'm from in Washington, D.C., also in Nigeria. Um, in Georgia Tech and Georgia Atlanta. Georgia Tech and Atlanta. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a remarkable, um, remarkable journey. And, you know, I just I want to keep doing the right things and keep uh, lifting people up. Keep yeah. it going. I know you said this is just the start, so y'all better watch out because it's going to be a lot of things going on in the next few years. Yeah. You know, but um, again, this you know this segment is about talking about our journeys, how we overcome, how yeah. we push through, how we push toward positivity, even even during times when it can be tough. Can you offer uh, just any pieces of encouragement or advice to anyone watching this that may be going through it? You know, maybe going through their own personal challenge, whatever that may be, because everyone's looks different. What are some words that you may have to share with them just that you've learned along the way? I think one thing I grew up with, uh, there was a song I grew up hearing in Nigeria. It was called No Condition is Permanent. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Nigerian culture, there's a lot of like phrases and parables and things like that. So I think that's one phrase that has allowed me to get through adverse situations mm -hmm. and has allowed me not to cool down, you know, when I'm, you know, on my way to something. So. For me, it's like if I'm poor today, you know, I've, I'm a person that I've lived in a third world country. I lived in the ghetto, in the hood. You know, I've lived in different like climates and I've been able to see that no condition is permanent, especially when you have God and you're prayerful and understanding that everything is subject to that moment and that period of time and your feelings and your emotions, that depression, you can come out of it and there's always, there's always hope. And, um, that's the, that's the one thing that's been big in my life is understanding that there's always hope and I'm I've always been a person that I've always been positive and hopeful. I don't know where I got it from, you know, but it, it definitely had something to do with my childhood and having malaria and having to survive that and fighting for my life. And I think that made me stronger to be able to deal with a lot of things that were to come. So I think uh, hope is a very important thing. And uh, for me, I get hope from my foundation in Jesus Christ my relationship with, with God and also my relationship with my family. I get hope from them even when, you know, things aren't going well and, you know, we lose a game where I didn't play well. You know, I get I get reinforced by those people and keeping those type of people close to me, people that I can talk about real stuff with and not you know, not just everybody around and you know, that those things are really those are things that are of value to me. That support system, the people around you, your faith. Keep it going. I mean, you're doing awesome. I know bigger things ahead. So excited for your continued growth and everything that you're doing. Well, hopefully you took away some gems from this conversation. I know I certainly did. Thank you so much for sharing today. Jerry, if they want to keep in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? And also keep up with your foundation as well. I'm on Instagram and Twitter like everybody these days. Everybody. Also Facebook, same name. And then uh, I have a foundation website called Glory's Hope Foundation and also on Instagram Glory's Hope Foundation so you can go on there you can see some of the work I'm doing and you can donate if you want to. Doing some really awesome work with the foundation too. So awesome. Well thank you so much for your time. Thanks, High five. Appreciate you. We appreciate you and all yeah. your gems. So make sure to tune in. The next episode we'll have another special guest just like Jerry. In the meantime sending you all a lot of love, positive vibes and peace from our heart to yours.